What is going on, guys? Welcome to Greggles TV Daily Rewind. This is where we go back a week and give you all of your tech news in one single video. And the news this week was all over the place. We had Note 20 news in Project C and what that could all be about. And I know a lot of you guys are looking forward to the Note 20, so it's nice to get some news and rumors about that. We've got news on the S20 and the camera update that's been pushed out and if it works or not. And we've got news on the new Pixel 4a and so much more, guys. So check out this week. Let me know what your favorite news story is of the week. And I'll see you in the next one. First story of the day is if you're in the US of A and your Galaxy S20 arrives today, look at all that rhyming, then you'll be able to get their very first pushed out update, software update. And as you can see right here, this is for T-Mobile. I also heard it came out for Verizon. I'm assuming it's gonna be the same one on Sprint as well. And it improves performance, specifically the camera, which is one of the things everybody wanted to see. If you're watching and reading some of the reviews that are out for this phone so far, it doesn't go into complete specifics of what it fixed for the camera, but it does say it fixed the uh, performance of the camera. It also says security of your device has also been improved. This is a March 1st, 2020 security patch, 431 megabytes. And then lastly, shipping and delivering of the Galaxy S20 devices. Now, today is gonna to be a very happy day for some. Today is gonna to be the day you actually will receive the phone. Most of the people are gonna be on uh, a T-Mobile and Sprint that actually received the phone. There will be some Samsung people as well. Me, myself, it's kind of weird. So I looked at where my actual shipment is and it's actually in San Diego and that's where our main FedEx hub is for down here, is in San Diego. So mine still says March 3rd at the time of making this video, but I know they haven't gone out and started delivering just yet. So mine actually could get delivered today as well. And I know some of you guys who had deliveries of March 3rd are now seeing deliveries of March 2nd. So just because, you know, you might have looked at your, your FedEx truck and right when you woke up and you said, ah, it still says March 3rd, yours might be today. You might want to see if they actually changed it, especially if you don't have FedEx notifications turned on. Definitely check that out. Uh, the other things that we were hearing about Best Buy, I still don't really have any new information about when it's going to be shipped out. A lot of people are still saying March 6th as a pickup date. The new one though is AT&T. I got someone on my mess, uh, Patty on, on my, on my uh, channel, put a message saying that uh, hers was gonna be delivered on March 4th. Great news, so AT&T is now starting to ship out and get tracking numbers as well. So at this point, everybody is shipping out and delivering. Should be as early as today, tomorrow, three, four as well. Let's get into the tech news. First story of the day is about the OnePlus Eight. Now, if you're a OnePlus fan, you might be wanting to know when this phone will be coming out. And it looks like per tech radar, it will be launching in mid April. So looking at next month when this phone should launch and then it'll probably be in your hands later on that month so that you're able to you know, use it. Now, the, there looks like they're gonna release possibly three versions of the phone. Uh, one, OnePlus uh, Eight Lite, OnePlus Eight, and then a OnePlus Eight Pro. And obviously you'll have different, slightly different specs between the versions up to a, up to a 2K plus 120 Hertz display, Snapdragon 865, 12 gigs of RAM and so on and so forth. If you used a OnePlus phone, you've known they like super, super fast phones um, with generally very good hardware. So yeah, looking at mid April for the launch of this phone. And the last story of the day, we kind of talked about it yesterday is did people actually get their Galaxy S20 phones? And I did, I've got a, Snail case on this right now, but uh, yeah, I got mine and uh, it's awesome for the most part. It's a lot of the same stuff in terms of like if you're coming from another Galaxy phone, the software experience is very, very similar. But other than that, it is a very, very nice device. I love the 120 hertz display. It's tough to go from that back to 60 hertz just because you know you lose resolution. But at the same time, it's very difficult to see between the two resolutions, like if which one's a lot better. But the smoothness you can definitely feel, it's just so much smoother with the 120 hertz. 
Let's get into the tech news. First story of the day is about the Samsung Galaxy Note 20, which is obviously the successor to the Samsung Galaxy Note 10. And what we're hearing so far, at least rumors, base storage is looking like it could possibly be 128 gigabytes, which would be down from the 256 gigabytes that was in the Galaxy Note 10. Now this version that has 128 gigabytes could be the base base storage like they did with the Note 10. The Note 10, regular Note 10, they had uh, no SD card, but they had 256 gigabytes of storage. Here they could possibly have 128 gigabytes of storage with a micro SD card. I would think if they're gonna put 128 gigabytes here, they're definitely gonna re-add the micro SD card on the base version of the Galaxy Note 20. They have to, especially with 8K video recording and really high resolution photos and just everyday usage of the phone, they have to at that point. And the last story of the day is also about the Galaxy Note 20 and it comes from a tweet from Ice Universe where he says the following, he says, Galaxy Note 20, Project C. And obviously, like he always does, he almost never goes into full detail and leaves it into a mystery of webs that could go into. And so that'll end up being your question of the day. What is Project C? C is a lot of kind of jokes in the comments if you end up going to the link down below and read some of the stuff people wrote what Project C could stand for. I don't know, I don't, I'm not sure what Project Project Camera, but I mean, they already kind of did that with the Galaxy S20. Um, I don't know, that's maybe what, I don't know. What do you think Project C stands for? Let's get into the tech news. First story of the day is about TCL. Now, if you know TCL, you know they make televisions. Well, they also make a lot of other products, including smartphones, and these are prototypes, but they potentially could be coming out. They're foldable smartphones. The first one we're gonna take a look at has a AMOLED display, and it actually has a, a display where when it's just one display, it's at 6.75 inches, and then when the motor slides it out to the right, um, it'll be 7.8 inches, and, it's, and like I said, it is a motor that moves it back and forth if you want it to be that large, and it having that motor, and having it slide basically underneath the display allows it to not have a crease, a visible crease anyway. Their, their other one is a tri-fold smartphone, meaning that it can fold basically into almost like three displays. So at first it's a 6.65 inch smartphone, then turns into a 10 inch tablet. And it's supposed to have a resolution of possibly up to 3K. Most phones and tablets are at 2K. This one will be up to 3K. Very interesting product. Now, like I said, those are prototypes. Those might never ever come out. They might come out you know, later this year or next year, but still, it's something to keep your eye on for the future of foldable technology. And the last story of the day is about Project C. Now, yesterday, uh, we, if you saw my news show, you saw that the Galaxy Note 20 Ice Universe put out a tweet saying Project C. And I asked you guys, well, what do you think it means? I said, no, maybe it's the camera. We've got a little bit more information on it. Uh, this is an additional tweet from Ice Universe saying it stands for Canvas with new S Pen features in, in hand. So Canvas obviously has something to do with, uh, you know, art or drawing something, you know, maybe it's gonna be some more features with the S Pen that you can do with painting and, and more art stuff. So that's what I would think that the, the, the main name of a Canvas stands for. But then I found another tweet from Roland Quand, who's also a, a leaker, and he says Samsung Galaxy Note 20 is not just Project C, Internal codename for one of the models is Canvas 2. Based on this, there will, must also be a Canvas 1, right? Let's get into the tech news. First story of the day is if you use Android Messages, which is Android's text messaging app from Google, then it looks like they're going to be getting an update soon per breakdown of the code built into the app where you're gonna be able to you know, like and react to text messages the same way iPhone people do. So if you remember, you get something from an iMessage person that says, oh, I laughed at this message, or I love this message, or liked this message, you're gonna be getting possibly very similar information as well when you'll be able to send text messages back to people uh, from your Android Messages app, 
What do you guys think? Are you excited about that? Are you not? I'm, I'm, I'm fine with that. I think it's, you know, any way to type less is great. I almost always use their um, uh, predefined reply messages just because it almost always works out. So I'm like, this is perfect. So to be able to click one button to like a message or love it or laugh at it, that's going to be even better. Next up, if you have a Samsung account, which a lot of you guys do because a lot of you guys have Galaxy phones that follow me and you log out of that Samsung account or you're logging into it for the first time in a long time, you're gonna have to set up, set up two-step authentication. Now, two-step authentication is gonna be where you need to not only have to know the password to get into your account, but you're also gonna have to get either a text message or a code beforehand when you set up two-step authentication in order to log into your account. Now, I have a video on how to set up two-step authentication on a Samsung account. It's linked down below. And again, this is only going to happen to you if you log out of your uh, Samsung account right now uh, or you log into it again for the first time or for in a long time you know you had to re-log into it or something but yeah it is a thing now Samsung accounts two-step authentication and the last story of the day Samsung Galaxy S20 S20 Ultra and S20 Plus as you know, there's been some issues with autofocusing and maybe photos not looking as great as they could have. Well, the update, the one we've been waiting for is officially rolling out. This is a 253 meg update and it's rolling out to Korea first, but the breakdown of the English, <laughs> Korean into English, says improved camera quality and functionality stabilization looks like it got fixed as well as well as a security and um, it keeps you at the march 1st security level which i believe we're already at anyway but yeah this is the update that will improve and best your camera um, features and, and and just quality overall so it's a very very welcome update i mean it already takes really nice photos but there's definitely some some icky ickiness some bugs rolling around in there that need to be updated so once you get this update let us know but thank you. let's get into the tech news first story of the day is that there's going to probably going to be a new color for the new galaxy s20 ultra now this comes from a survey that somebody got and in the survey you can see guys based on the colors below which color would you be most likely to buy the Samsung Galaxy S20 Ultra 5G in. Please click on each color in the order you must you would rank them in with one being the most likely and three being the least likely and you can see the cosmic gray which we know about cosmic black again which we know about and then cloud white that would be the new color and I would I would have maybe chose the white the white looks really really nice that's a nice looking color and the last story of the day is about the camera on the Galaxy S20 phones and if you've been reading the internet and you've had the phone, there might be some camera, you know, nuisances, they you know, like some issues with it. Maybe like the focusing goes in and out or it like shakes when it's like doing a video. You might notice stuff like that. Not all the time, but occasionally. And it looks like uh, yesterday I talked about Samsung pushing on an update that would fix a lot of the camera issues. Well, there's already a video out for somebody that got the update and it looks like it has not fixed them yet. Now, if you watch the video, it is linked down below and uh, it's from this guy right here by the name of uh, Korean Nobita Eric. And the video doesn't have a ton of views, but I would definitely watch it. You can see he shows before and after the update and it does not fix the focusing issue, unfortunately, at least based off his testing. I don't know if it fixed other issues that people are having, but this specific test doesn't look to be fixed just yet. So I know some of you are gonna be worried about, you know, oh, is the, what's up with the phone? You know, the part of the camera sucks. The camera doesn't suck, the camera's really good. And just like I said yesterday, it just has some little parts that need to be like, amended or like you know slightly fixed not a huge deal but you know just something that some things that just need to be slightly fixed with the camera the other story i wanted to talk about and i know this was my last story but the other story i want to talk about some people have ordered their galaxy s20 devices and they were promised to receive them um, no later than march 6th which was my birthday by the way um and they don't have it and they've actually been delayed and they're getting um, pushed back to like, I think March 12th. I've had a couple people reached out to me saying that. So you might wanna check with Samsung to see if you were supposed to order, have received your order by Friday, AKA yesterday, you might wanna check if it fell into this coming week. And, then, and if it did, Samsung, a lot of people is offering them like a $25 free gift card to the Samsung store. So if you haven't received that and you were promised it on the 6th, it is something you might wanna reach out to Samsung to maybe to get an extra 25, even though Samsung seems to proactively be sending those out to people.
Let's get into the tech news. First story of the day is about the Google Pixel 4a. Remember, this will be the successor to the Google Pixel 3a, and it will be the budget-friendly version of the uh, Google Pixel 4 and 4XL. It should retail for probably, if I had to guess like last year, $399. And this is supposedly what it's going to look like. This tweet comes from Tech Droider, and I'll link his uh, Twitter account down below. And when we look at a closer look at these photos, this is the front of the screen. It looks, at the top, looks like at the top there is gonna be a, a headphone jack, I would assume. It looks like anyway, per the cutout of the case. On the top left corner, you see the selfie camera. And then, I don't know, kind of, and I guess it's not that big of the bezel. It's not, not, not too bad anyway, at least for a budget phone at that. Uh, the next photo just shows the screen with 2% battery life, and it looks like the settings menu in I guess Spanish, I guess that language is. I don't even know, to be honest with you. Let me know in the comments down below. Uh, after that, you see the fabric looking case with the fingerprint sensor on the back, which I absolutely love, and the camera cutout in the top left. And then beyond that, again, another photo of the screen and it gives you a better look at the camera in the top left. This phone should be out very, very soon, March, April, May at the latest, before you probably be able to get your hands on this. Um, last year's version, uh, I did, I liked it, but then when Android, I think, yeah, Android 10 came out, it was it turned into an amazing phone. It was like, it turned, it got better performance, it was smoother, it was awesome. So at that point, if you're looking for a budget phone or a second phone or a phone to give your mom or your dad or your kid, this is gonna be a great phone to get them. I know some of you are gonna come back with, get the new OnePlus, it's so much better cameras not better on the one plus than this trust me and so if cameras and photos are important to you plus this is still pretty fast so I don't know it's, it's definitely a phone you want to keep your eye on if you're looking for a budget phone and the last story of the day, if you're still looking to purchase a Galaxy S20, S20 Plus, or S20 Ultra, you can still get some nice trade-in offers for it, up to 700 bucks if you have a Samsung phone, and so on and so forth. And the release dates of these aren't that bad as well, so it looks like these are gonna ship out as late as March 10th for the 128 gigabyte versions, or if you want the Ultra, and you want it in 512, it looks like it could ship out as late as March 27th, but anyways, Again, shipping needs not that bad, and the, the, the trading values are fantastic. Anyways, guys, thanks for watching. My son came in at the end here, so your question of the what's our question of the day? Tractor. Tractor. What's your favorite tractor? No, I'm just kidding. What, what do you want me to ask them? Tractor. Hey, keep saying tractor. Anyways, let me know what you're uh, doing today. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you down the road. Ruh, 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 ruh.